Hey artists, we are going to be creating expressive food. Here's what you need. Your rubric, some handouts to get you thinking. If you're home, you'll need your air dry clay, a selection of clay here at school, some tools, and water. Let's get started. Let's take a moment to review the learning target. Your goal is to design, sculpt, and paint an expressive food or a food with feelings. Just as a reminder, a sculpture is a 3D form of art. Expressive means to share meaning or feelings. And we're going to make sure that our sculptures have additive features or parts where we add on clay and subtractive features where we remove clay. Let's exercise our creative muscles by thinking of five different ways that we could approach the project. Your goal is to combine a food with an expression. So I have a number of resources that you can look through, foods and beverages, fast food, fruits and vegetables, and then a handout with emotions. So take five minutes to create a few different sketches here in pencil that clearly combine a feeling with a food. Artists, here's what I came up with. I decided to challenge myself to do more than five. So I have a salty salt shaker, a starstruck broccoli, hopeful broccoli um, with cheese. Hopeful you'll like the broccoli with cheese. A sassy tomato, a lovable avocado, panicked pancakes, contented coffee, a sad fried egg, and an adoring strawberry. Artists, once you have selected some of your favorite ideas and just double check them with me, it's time to think about what form you need the clay in. If you are doing something that is mostly flat, something like this sad fried egg, you may want to select clay that is in a slab. It's already flat. This would work really well for something like a taco or pancakes or something like that. That creates what's called a relief sculpture, something that's flat on one side. For a strawberry, it doesn't make sense for me to use a flat slab. I want to build a 3D form or what's called sculpture in the round. So go ahead and select what kind of clay you want to begin with. If you are working at home, you have air dry clay and you could use a rolling pin or a pipe, something round that uh, could create a slab as well. This is my process for making my adoring strawberry. I am going to create two little pinch pots. Now the reason that I am making a pinch pot is that anything that is a form 3D that is big with clay needs to be hollow inside. So this is going to allow me to do that. Here's my process. You'll notice that as I was making the pinch pot that I wasn't pinching like this, but I was pinching more like pressing, like a press pot. And I was rotating the clay as I went to get an even thickness on the wall of this clay. Now I'm going to need to attach these to make my strawberry shape. To get a nice flat attachment, sometimes what I'll do is tap the top and the bottom on the table and you can see that it kind of flattens out that attachment area. Now you'll remember from the past that you have to score and slip to get clay to properly attach. So we're going to use this little scoring tool and you're going to etch into both of the surfaces and then add some water to create slip like this. 
once your pieces are attached, we obviously want to smooth this so we get just the surface that looks cohesive. So I'm gonna use um, one of these wooden tools. You could also use just a stick. And I am going to move some of the clay into that gap and then smooth it for a nice clean looking surface. Now that I have the basic shape of my strawberry, I want to think about the additional features that I need to make this look more like a berry. And I think I'm definitely gonna need um, the leaves and the stem on the top, and then I'll think about the expression. Now, this is when the slab might come in handy and some of the tools that I have. I considered maybe using the star cookie cutter as kind of a starting point for creating that leaf structure. So I'm gonna try that now. All right, students, so I have my little leafy part. Um, there is a stem that comes out of the top. There's kind of a little circular shape that you'll see on the top of a strawberry. So I found this cap and I thought that might be a way for me to create the little round shape. Something maybe like that. And then I am going to form a stem using a little tiny coil. Artist, as you can see here, I've got my main berry uh, done, the leaves, the stem. I also decided that a flower might be cute um, attached later on. So my next step is to think about the expression. Um, I definitely want to add that to a part that is smoothed out. Um, in fact, this is a point at which you could even use your sponge dip it in the water, be sure to squeeze it out to get um, a really nice smooth surface since adding the features and any subtractive parts or parts where you're gonna take away like I'm gonna do with the seeds, um, you are gonna wanna have a nice surface to work from. So I'm gonna take a moment to do that. And then looking at these, this little feature, I think I am going to use maybe the back of a tool for the circle eyes and then just a stick or one of these little ribbon tools might be a possibility for the little mouth. So I'm going to experiment with that next. So this is my little berry. Um, let's see. Here's how I might approach making an expressive food that begins with a slab. One suggestion is to begin by creating a template for you to cut around. If you try and just do it freehand, sometimes it works great and other times it really doesn't. So I made this as the base for my fried egg. The next step, now that I have my fried egg base cut here, I'm gonna set this aside and spend a minute either using two fingers or you could use the sponge again um, to smooth the surface. Artist, here is my egg white. And then I'm gonna move on to making the yolk. I considered maybe using this cookie cutter, but I'll play around with it and see what I can come up with. my happy strawberry and my sad fried egg. Um, the 
pieces that are built with slabs uh, do not need to be vented. Um, as long as this attachment is done really well and there's no bubble inside, it should be just fine. So the next step is to let these dry. They'll be fired and then I'll create a second video to show you how we're gonna paint them. Happy creating.